Okay, in this video, I'd like to introduce the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is a piece of mathematics which is used extensively in science and engineering. It is useful mainly because of two properties which the Fourier transform has. The first one is that the transform is excellent at simplifying complicated mathematical expressions. And this might seem a bit strange because the Fourier transform itself is a complicated looking mathematical expression and we'll discuss that later in greater depth. The second reason that the transform is useful is that it has a very simple and readily accessible physical interpretation, namely that it will give you the frequency components in your signal. Now the free transform is something which a lot of people will struggle. They will struggle with and as a result they cannot fully embrace the power and usefulness of the Fourier transform. They will spend time worrying about how it's derived or what is the, the significance of the cosines and sines when in fact they should be using it to uh, discuss quantum physics or whatever else it is that they, they're, they're studying at that particular time. So what I'm going to attempt to do is alleviate all of those problems and discuss things to the correct depth and introduce the correct number of uh, topics and try and transition between different topics, namely power series, Fourier series, and then the Fourier transform itself. And hopefully at the end, you will have an appreciation and an understanding of what the Fourier transform does. You will understand its power and you will, be, you will feel comfortable in using the Fourier transform in your own studies in the future. In order to convince you of this, I'd like to list the topics which I'm going to discuss at varying degrees during the coming minutes. I'm going to discuss a bottom line up front. What is the Fourier transform? I'm going to discuss basis vectors and functions, namely cosines and sines. Frequency space and frequency components. How the Fourier transform works. In other words, how do we get the frequency components? I'll discuss Euler's formula. Why do we care about the Fourier transform? We will see what the Fourier transform results look like by plotting a few graphs and where it's used. I'll discuss the transition between power series or from, excuse me, power series, the Taylor and McLaren series, to the Fourier series and Fourier transforms. I'll discuss sinusoids, the Fourier series and the Laplace transform. And finally, I will give you a rough derivation of the Fourier transform. In a second video to this, I will give a complete and thorough derivation, but this one will just try and motivate why in fact we can use the Fourier transform. So let's begin. The first thing I think which we must do is read the Fourier transform, and I've written it on the bottom of your screen. So to read it would be as follows. You would say a function of time is one over two pi, the infinite integral of a function of frequency e to the i omega t d omega. That would be the inverse transform. And the forward free transform here, f of omega is the infinite integral, there's missing a, a minus sign there, f of t e to the minus i omega t dt. This is of course a complicated looking expression, but it is not impenetrable by any stretch of the imagination. In actual fact, hopefully soon enough, you'll become comfortable with what it, what it uh, looks like, what it means, and you will be able to use it. Moving on, let's discuss the Fourier transform. Let's give you the bottom line. The Fourier transform transforms a function of one particular variable, let's say time, which of course is measured in seconds, and this will live in the time domain. It'll be transferred to, transformed to a second function, which lives in the frequency domain, and is going to be measured in per seconds or hertz. And the second thing it does is it changes the basis of the function from whatever it was at the start to cosines and sines. Although I'm going to discuss it at greater depth in the future, I'd just like to uh, discuss why we can use cosines and sines as a set of basis functions in the first place. Essentially, this boils down to one mathematical property of cosine and sine namely that they are mathematically orthogonal. 
Now I'm sure you understand the concept of orthogonality in terms of the i hat, j hat, k hat unit vectors, or perhaps r hat, theta hat, phi hat in this spherical polar coordinate system. So those particular vectors are both mathematically and physically orthogonal, but the reason they can describe every point in space is because they are mathematically orthogonal. And since cosine and sine also satisfy this criterion, they can be used as a set of basis functions in any particular space. Now that might make, make uh, or we'll say that might resonate with you, or may, might make some sense, or it may not. So let's try a second definition, or a second bottom line. The Fourier transform does two things. The first thing it does is a domain change to the frequency domain. So it'll change your function from, let's say, small f, and then when we, when we speak about a transformed function, we usually speak of capital F. So let's say small f, which is your original function, is one of time measured in seconds. The transformed function will be one of frequency measured in per seconds. If your initial function is one of position, or length, excuse me, measured in meters, then your transformed function will be one of frequency measured in per meter. Note, of course, we can always go from the linear frequency to the angular frequency through our factor of twice pi. The second thing which the Fourier transform does is it changes your basis functions. Now, different bases shouldn't be new to you. We use, for example, i hat, j hat, k hat, or r hat, theta hat, phi hat, or r hat, theta hat, z hat, to describe the position domain. So we have diff different basis functions or different basis vectors, but we have the same domain. So we would talk about, these would be our normal ve vectors. We have spherical coordinates and we have cylindrical coordinates. So it shouldn't be new to you to express your coordinates using different basis vectors. And I'll discuss basis vectors in greater uh, detail in the future. But my point is that we, yes, we, we often transform using different functions or different vectors to express the same point in space. Now, of course, the Dirac delta function can also be thought of as a basis function because the Dirac delta function can describe every single point in space. So what the Fourier transform does is it'll change whatever basis vectors or basis functions your, your, your original function is of to ones of cosines and sines. And it'll move from the, the time domain, say, to the frequency domain. Or it'll move from the position domain, uh, the length domain, to the frequency domain. But each time it will express your function using the basis vectors of, or basis functions of cosine and sine. I'd like to discuss the concept of spatial frequency quickly. It's something which sounds very uh, difficult, but in fact isn't at all. And it's nothing new to you, but it's perhaps just a new way of describing something which you are used to in the past. Certainly, the first time somebody mentioned spatial frequency to me, I had no idea at all what they were talking about. Let's think about temporal frequency. This is the time which has passed between two different occurrences of an event. So you might say, what's the frequency of the cars passing on the road? Well, then you would count the time between the cars passing you on the road. And if it was, we'll say, periodic, then you would be able to discuss the frequency of the cars passing you at a particular point on the road.